Margie Graff is the president of the Rockville Chamber of Commerce. Um, I was uh, introduced to her through our Dean, uh, Catherine Davis, and I'm very grateful for that introduction. Um, she comes to the Chamber of Commerce world after owning two successful businesses. Um, she first went to school for court reporting, which I find fascinating, and she ended up as a senior account executive for uh, various TV stations in um, Connecticut with the, uh, with the startup of ESPN. Then after launching her own media buying business, she started another company that, was, that specialized in wellness technologies for hotels and spas worldwide. Um, then in 2008 came the, uh, the, the economic downturn where things uh, went a little bit different. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and let Margie take it from here, she's going to talk to you about her own background and then um, provide some really useful information for you about uh, the value of a Chamber of Commerce. And Thank you, Rebecca, for inviting me to speak today. Um, I'm glad to be here. And uh, you, you told my story already. <laughs> from, <laughs> from high school, I worked in a work study program. And uh, so right after I graduated, they offered me a, a full time job in Tampa, Florida, and I grabbed it and uh, loved it, then ended up going back to Connecticut and not knowing what I wanted to do. So I ended up going to court on a speeding ticket and that's where I saw a court reporter. I'm like, hmm, I wonder how much she makes. And uh, so then I found out how much she makes and then I said, well, I'm gonna do that. And then I did a two to four year uh, school, you know, to get a court reporting degree. And then I was a, the superior court reporter in Middletown, Connecticut. Well, that lasted maybe a year or two. Uh, what I found is I was an extrovert in an introvert job. And you have to realize, you know, your strengths and what you're good at. And I used to like kick the lawyers and say, come on, I already have it down. You know, come on. It was the same old, same old. So then I ended up uh, opening my own business. And I said, I'm going to um, be a court reporter on my own. And I'm going to go and take depositions and arbitrations and last will and testaments. And I did that for a couple of years. And then again, you know, here I am young. I was 19 or 20 and I was working all night long. I was taking testimony in the daytime and typing it all night. And I hate to date myself, but that was before a computer. So I had to, if you made a mistake on a legal document, you had to tear it out of the machine and start all over. And I was up all night crying one night. My mother was my proofreader. I was taking a testimony from a doctor who had a different accent. And when you're a court reporter, you, it's all phonetics. It's not how it's spelled, it's how it sounds. So I could repeat it back with his accent, but I didn't understand the words and I could not transcribe it. And I'm like, there's gotta be a better way. And I opened up the newspaper and there was an ad that said new TV station opening up in Bristol, Connecticut. And that was a startup of ESPN. And I was the fifth person hired there. So we worked out of a trailer before the building was even built. And that was an exciting time. Um, you know, my world opened up and it was, it was great. However, after two years, I was like, uh, I was in charge of riding home to Getty Oil for a couple more million of dollars to stay on the air for another week. And I'm like, you know, this is not self-sustaining and they're, they're going to go on. For... So uh, I ended up going um, to NBC and getting a sales job there. And then I just, you know, worked my way through different TV stations. So I'm telling you this because, you know, of opportunities that I saw as, you know, as I went, um, I've always had an open mind and I've always looked for, for opportunities um, that would fit my personality and where I could really make a difference. So then I did the different TV stations. And then after a while, I realized I could only sell the advertising for the station I worked at. And it wasn't the right thing for the customer. So I was always customer focused. Um, and then I ended up opening up my own media buying business. And that's what I did for over 10 years. And then I went over to the UK and I became certified to buy media over there too. So then I was going back and forth for clients. 
And it wasn't until I moved to Vermont, I got married, I adopted a little boy and moved to Vermont and I still had my clients. And then uh, some of the people in Connecticut said to my clients, do you know she's not even in this state anymore? And I lost some of them. So that's what happened. And then the little boy I adopted had um, really health issues with his skin and eczema. So then I ended up in the wellness industry because of him. So I was like, I have to make my home a wellness environment to help his, you know, skin and his air and how he sleeps and how he breathes. And the next thing I know, I'm flying over to Japan and I, in, and I um, meet a, the number one wellness company in the world called Niken. Niken was, however, a network marketing company. I didn't like that part, but I wanted to be able to buy their products at wholesale and resell them mm-hmm. because my idea dear at that time was when we traveled, we used to have to take all this stuff with us, air filters. You know, I mean, we traveled with a lot of stuff, water filtration systems, shower heads. I mean, the whole bit. So I said to my husband, wouldn't it be great if these hotels already had this stuff in it? Boom, there goes the wellness room idea. So then um, that's how that was created. And I went and sold um, wellness technologies to uh, hotels and spas worldwide. So I went back to uh, Niken and I said, I want to do this wellness room program and I want to be able to buy it, you know, the products at wholesale, but I think this could be much bigger than just me. I would like to create a, a, a DVD so anybody in any country of the whole world can just put it in and it will be the same wellness room program so anybody can sell it. They said, great, because obviously they're going to make money. Everybody was going to make money. My biggest business mistake. Okay, here goes. It was because I didn't have a chamber of commerce. I didn't have a mentor. I didn't have a board of directors. I had no one. I forgot to take a percentage of the sales. I would have been a multimillionaire by now. And I totally forgot. it. I was so busy to make sure those DVDs were you know, in the right format, in the right language for the right country that I forgot about that huge part. So I'm just giving you some background because then what happened 2008 hit, like Rebecca said, it was the economic downturn. And here I am selling high end hydrotherapy uh, tubs, uh, infrared saunas. And I was selling to a lot of day spas in Canada. And all of a sudden the market dried up. There was no government money behind me. There was, you know, it was like the accountant says, either go bankrupt or or find a job. And when you're an entrepreneur and you have given birth to this business and, and you hear, you know, bankrupt or get a job, I'm like, oh my God. So the pain that I felt. Um, so anyway, my companies were members of the Chamber of Commerce in Vermont. And I went to the president and I said, you know, what am I going to do? And he said, well, there's a job open in the next town over for president of the chamber. I'm like, well, I don't know anything about a chamber. He says, but you know all about business. And because of your experience, you'd be a great director. So I went and I applied and I got it. And I think one of the reasons I got it was more of the person I am you know, at that time, I, I started a um, summer camp for underprivileged kids, you know, and I think it was more about the person and what I, I brought to the table than really the experience, because I didn't have any chamber experience. I knew what a chamber did. I knew that if I needed something, I would always go to a, a chamber to find a resource. And I always would go to a chamber and use them like my board of directors because I wasn't selling to anybody in the chamber. They weren't buying my infrared saunas or my hydrotherapy tubs. So, I mean, that wasn't even my market, but it was really important to me to have people that I could run ideas off of. So I would never make that same mistake of not taking a percentage of sales. You know, so um, when I was at that job for, 10 years in Vermont, and I moved up the ladder pretty quick. I was president of the Vermont Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives, and I went to the New England Association of Chamber of Commerce Executives. And what I did is I'm all inclusive. I believe everybody works together. High tide raises all ships. I got all the New England states to work together under one brand. 
And that was, that was wonderful. And now um, I got recruited down to Rockville. I'm starting my third year here in Rockville and I love it. And I find that, um, you know, the chambers here all work together like we did in New England. You know, we all meet and we talk about best practices and we're all here to help businesses and entrepreneurs and, and the community. What can we do to help? Because the Chamber of Commerce is the voice of the business community. Um, I can give you a couple of examples. There was um, a company who called me and they were moving in Rockville from one location to the other and they got held up in permitting and they had X amount of time before they could do their build out with a new place. It was one call from me and they got their permit the next day. Okay, so that's like the power of a Chamber of Commerce. It's access to get, get things done. Um, the other thing is during COVID, all the chambers kicked in high gear and we provided information on the PPP loans and the grants that were available. And we helped people with their applications and we followed up for them. So, you know, a Chamber of Commerce is a great resource. And another thing is I tell everybody, you know, when they say, well, what chamber should I join? Because there are a lot of chambers. Every town has their own chamber. Then Montgomery County has a chamber. Then the state has a chamber. Then, you know, then the America has a chamber. International has a chamber. So it, how it works is you want to join the chamber where your business is located or where you live. Because that's where you'll get the bigger bang for the buck. And then if you want to say you live in Silver Spring, let's just take an example and you join that chamber and you're gonna get connected and that's gonna be great. But you wanna market to Rockville. You wanna hit that market. So then you join the Rockville chamber and then you get involved in our committees and our masterminds and then we introduce you to, to our community. So that's, that's really how it works and that's the best way for you to get involved. Um, every chamber has a young professionals group and I think it's really important to um, check them out. Uh, we have one coming up next week and I'm sure you're more than welcome to, to hop in on Zoom and, and see you know, who they are and what they do. Um, ours is being kind of revamped right now. Uh, we had somebody who was leading it who, who moved on and then we just had uh, like temporary, but now we're, we're revamping it. So it would be a good idea to, to jump on and, and see what it's all about. Uh, we have all kinds of different uh, committees and groups because, you know, what was important to me when I owned my own business was these groups, these different mastermind groups. Like we have one for public policy. Those are people who, who care about the direction Rockville's going in. We have a membership committee and that is like welcoming new members into the chamber and following up with them, almost like a mentor mentee program. Um, we have a marketing committee, which helps the chamber. We're, right now we're gonna launch a new website. We're launching a new business directory, paid social media campaigns. So a marketing committee helps with that. We have CEO roundtables where that's pretty a tight group. Um, those are CEOs of different organizations that meet once a month and they talk about best practices. So they're on the same level playing field with one another. Um, we have a business to business group. That's like a leads group, you know, where a lot of people who are in like financials or banking, you know, they're always looking for, for leads and referrals to grow their business. So that's for them. We have a business owner mastermind. That's, you know, a, from new business to, to established business because the established business always has a good advice for the, the, the new business because they were, everybody started off as a small business. Um, we have a woman's mastermind. They're different, you know, topics that women like to talk about and no, no offense to the men, but you know, there's, so, you know, we have all these different groups and that's what was important to me when I owned my own business. So I wanted to make sure that our committees and masterminds are really strong because that's where you're going to get the benefit. Some people don't do any Zoom meetings. They don't do any of the breakfast series. They don't come to lunch and learns. They don't come to nighttime mix and mingles. They only go to these masterminds because that's, that's their tribe, if you will. And that's where they get the most benefit. 
So there's not one size fits all. It's depending on you, what your needs are, what your wants are. And the best thing is just to talk to any chamber director and tell them, you know, what you're trying to do and what's important to you. And then our job is to connect you with, with the resources, you know, that will help propel you forward. So it's not about us. It's all about you. And then we, you know, we do all kinds of different programs. We have um, leader cast. I know some of the students have been on our women on our leader cast program. We had Magic Johnson. Um, who did we just we just finished Radha? We have um, there's five more speakers coming up, and you can go on the Rockville Chamber website slash leader cast 2020, and you can sign up for any of these programs. They're really inspiring. You know, and one thing that I've taken away from each of them is that they all had a coach or a mentor, you know, so they, they never did it alone. And I would have saved myself a lot of grief had I had a coach back then when I was uh, thinking big picture and not, not the financial side of it. Um, and then we do all kinds of, you know, economic development webinars, cybersecurity webinars. We do all kinds of webinars, you know, that educate our business community. Um, and then, you know, we offer a lot of benefits too. When someone joins the chamber, um, we ask them to join directly on the website. And when they pay with a credit card, it automatically populates our website. So they're welcomed as a new member for 30 days. And then they also get in our, every Monday, we send out a newsletter to 3000 businesses. And they're also welcomed, uh, for 30 days in that newsletter. And then we have a member who uh, does podcasts and he offers them a free podcast. So that's a great way, you know, for people to get to, to know that person a little bit better. And um, so that's how we, we, we launch someone right away. And then we ask them if they will, you know, come to some of these different groups, because I can't tell them what, what, where they're going to resonate. They have to feel it themselves you know, and they're different people in and out of the group. So I always say, come at least two or three times and then make a decision, you know, what, what you want to be a part of. And they can, you can hop in and out of the groups. It's not like you're stuck in one of them, but, you know, but if you do go and continue to go to one group, that's where you make your connections. People do business with people, you know, you know, like trust and respect and you have to earn it. And by showing up, and continuing to build that relationship, that's where you're going to get business from. That's where you're going to get your referrals from. It's all about networking. You know how they tell you it's who you know? It is. And a lot of it is. Um, if somebody feels comfortable with you and likes you and trusts you and, and, and knows that you're honest and what you say you're going to do, you do, you know, then I would have no problem sending that person a referral or making a connection to meet someone else. But if I don't know you or I don't understand your business or, you know, I, I heard some bad things, you know, I'm not going to give that referral, you know. So um, then also it's, it's very important for a business to make money, but it's also very important for a business to save money. So we, we concentrate on, on savings programs. So we did an energy co-op. And that's not only for a business, but for a personal uh, home as well. And then we have email marketing savings with constant contact. We have office supply savings through Staples. We have credit card processing. Um, we just started a group travel. Uh, we have dental and vision insurance and we have telehealth. So, you know, I'm looking at all these other things that we have that we can offer businesses to save money. The savings, if they took advantage of any one or two of these, that savings would pay for their chamber membership. Chamber membership for one to two employees is only $325 for the year. It would more than pay for their chamber membership. Um, and then, you know, we're all about communication and promotion. So, you know, we're launching a new website. Uh, uh, launching a new member directory. We have paid social media strategy. We have radio ads uh, that started. So, um, you know, with my background in advertising, marketing and promotion, you know, that that's what I love to do. 
and we were coming up with a rock star uh, awards. I was up at three in the morning writing scripts, you know, for the rock star, but that that's, you know, I know how to do that. So it's really second nature and I get excited. I can't sleep because I get excited about, you know, um, how to put them in the best light because it's all about them. But that is uh, the overview of how I got into the chamber world, how I found the opportunities. Um, you know, I was always open. It went from court reporting to TV to, you know, um, going off on my own because I always wanted to do the best for the client, not just for who I worked for. And um, so that, that was it. And now I think my biggest strength is, you know, because I've had that business experience, I can help a lot of people and I enjoy it because I feel like this, the chamber is like my own business. I get to work with so many different businesses all the time. It's a great profession. If anybody wants to even look at, at the Chamber of Commerce world, it is a wonderful profession. Thank you. For the, thank you so much, Margie. I, uh, I learned a lot and I see it looks like Kim Kelly and I are like racing to have um, all of our questions answered. So I've, I'm holding back a little bit. I've written down some additional ones. I'll go ahead and um, if you don't mind, I'd like to um, field the questions that, that Kim and I have. And while I'm doing that, if the rest of you are thinking, you know, how do you fit into this world of chambers of commerce or about and uh, things that have to do with business in Rockville, this is your person, and I hope that you will, you know, that you'll also add your, your questions to the list here. Um, Kim first wanted to know how you convinced the media company to hire you when you were a court reporter. I think it's fascinating too. Great. Well, it was really funny because they were looking for an administrative assistant to work for the president, and it was Bill Rasmussen. And Bill Rasmussen was a radio voice. So he didn't really have business experience himself. <laughs> and uh, he was just looking for an administrative assistant. So there I was with my court reporting machine taking all his notes down. <laughs> and, uh, and then we just started growing. And then Bill Rasmussen came, you know, left to start Enterprise Radio with his son. And then Chet Simmons from NBC came in. And that's when there was more structure. But you know, as far as I happened to be there, I think I was energetic and I was friendly and I said, yes, I can take notes. Mm. And, you know, back then they were hiring anybody, you know, they were really putting their money into their sports talent and, yeah. you know, the administrative assistant, you know, I could type really fast too. And then that was what the job was at that time. So, uh, so what I hear are a few lessons, one, be a good typer, right? Which I think most of us are now, but that wasn't always the case. And second is to say yes, right? When you when you're stepping a little out of your comfort zone, it's something we talk about in our in our class a lot. Um, well, you know, the other thing you have to realize is what drives you: the pain of staying up all night and transcribing something that wasn't in English to me. That pain was so bad that I wanted something else so so desperately. You know, so, it's just so it was the pain that drove that. And, you know, don't ever think you can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, no one, when I hear someone say, oh, you can't do that. That's when I'm like, oh, oh, watch me. You know, that, that's me though. You know, don't tell me you can't because there's always a way. There's always a way. You just have to think outside the box and just, you know, be open. But that's great. That's great advice. That's great advice. And what do you think is... Um, I wonder if you can talk a little bit about the Rockville Chamber in kind of in, in a little specific terms, in terms of like what kind of industries you have, how you know what what uh, what the membership is like, what you find is most valuable to um, the members in the chamber. Well, that's a good question because when I came here, I wanted to know who we are mm -hmm. because you know here I was in Rockville, coming from Vermont, and it's like a huge place, a lot of people, big buildings. And I had more members in rural Vermont than they had in Rockville. I'm like, what's wrong? Something's wrong. And it took me a while to identify it. Uh, one of the things was, you know, Montgomery County Chamber sits in Rockville. And people would, I'd ask them to join the chamber. And they say, oh, I'm already a member. And I'm looking and they're not a member. 
And I would say, no, you're not a member. And that was a problem because Montgomery County sits in Rockville. People assume they were a member of Rockville Chamber. So that was like a, a hurdle. So that's why in our, um, in our branding, it's where you can kind of see we're focused on Rockville and its community. That is our branding. So we focus on Rockville and that's what we drive home. We, we're not the county. We don't work for the city. A lot of people confuse us too. They think, you know, cause Rockville economic development is the economic development arm for the city of Rockville. The chamber has nothing to do with the city. We, we all work together, but we are a membership driven organization. So all of our money comes from our member dues and our programs and our sponsorships. Mm -hmm. So, you know, another thing, when I first got here, the city wanted me to move into town center. Okay. And I'm like, I was warned about this from the um, previous president of the chamber saying, you know, we're not, we're business to business. We're not tourism. So, you know, to, to be in town center, you're not going to have like the walk-ins. That's not who we are. So I had to switch my head because I was in tourism and now I have to be, oh, now I'm just business to business. So, and then they said, you're all of Rockville. Don't let the city suck you in. Like you're, you're just for them. So then, you know, our office is outside, you know, on one research court. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I like it there because that way it differentiates us. We're not, you know, in this, just the city because people thought we were just the city and we're not, we're all of Rockville. And I think North Bethesda is Rockville too. I go by zip codes cause I don't, I don't know. Right. So I go, if it's a Rockville zip code, it's Rockville. So, um, so that, that, did I answer your question? I, I, well, you said the value for the different membership. So when I got here, I said, well, who are we? I asked the membership committee, you know, usually businesses fall within four quadrants. You know, you're not going to talk to a CEO of a big company, the same as you're going to talk to a main street retail business. So I said, break out our membership and tell me where these people fall. And it was good to see that pie chart because we were like a quarter, a quarter, a quarter, a quarter. That, you know, someone else said to me, oh, you're all nonprofits. Well, we're not all nonprofits, you know, so it was not only good for me, but it was good for the membership to hear who we are, too. So it, it's a really good mix. We're not too heavy in, in one area. Um, I would say I would say most of them and the ones that are really active are the business to business um, like the financial planners, the ones looking for leads, the ones out there to grow their business, you know, it, it's heavy in financial services, mm -hmm, if, mm -hmm. if anything. Mm -hmm. That's interesting. There are a and, lot of banks. Yeah. And let me, um, I'm just curious because it raises a question for me when you were talking about the Montgomery County Chamber and then the, you know, all of the different areas of, of Montgomery County that have their own chamber. Do, is there overlap in the membership? Do people join yeah. mm -hmm. both? Yep. Well, that's, okay. what they, that's why I tell people join the chamber where your business is located, because that's where you'll get the biggest bang for your buck. They know that market. Mm -hmm. I know the Rockville market, right? So if your business is in Rockville, you'll get, you'll get more information with me because I know the market and I have access to the, the people that can help them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's interesting. That's good. Now, so yeah. if they want to join the Rockville chamber and they're, you know, a Germantown member, you know, after they join Germantown, yes, then join Rockville. Okay. So it's a way for people to expand their business. Absolutely. As well as just focus on where they, they are currently. Yeah. That's really interesting. And again, because we've got, um, you know, we've got an audience of students here, um, I, there, I would think that there'd be some more interest in learning a little more about the young professional group. Um, and also that you talked about the dues, mm -hmm. are the dues the same? Or there, is there a student rate or just students? We do, we do not have a student rate, but you know what? That's something for me to look into because I think um, your students would, would really enjoy the young professionals. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. I think that's something I, I will look into, but I'm going to invite everybody now on the next young professional meeting. And that is 
I know it's coming up. Uh, leader cast, B to B, closely. While Margie's doing that, um, I know that we've got some students here because I see you. Um, think about, you know, what questions, we, what might you be looking for um, to get from a Chamber of Commerce? Um, think about some questions that you have about how you might in, in, engage with a chamber. And it may be now, and it may be when you, you know, after you graduate, you're just starting okay. your own business. What, uh, what would you, what, what do you think you'd like to know about what the chamber could, could offer you? I'm putting in the chat, the young professionals. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll say too, the, uh, the Rockstar event that you held last year, we actually took a group of students yes, to you that did. event. It was just, just wonderful. It's, it was a, a great way for them to see, you know, people get recognized for incredible work that they're doing um, in our community. So that was a, so I, I put in a plug for that again too. That was, that was a wonderful, wonderful fun event and very high class too. <laughs> okay, well, you wanna hear what I'm doing this year? Yeah. Um, I'll put my email in here so people can email me um, if they're interested in attending. I'll give you the login information, okay? Sure, thank uh, you. This year, because everything we've had to move to Zoom, hmm. you know, we still have our, our six awards we're, we're going to be giving out. And, you know, it's like, how are we going to do that where it's not a half hour show that's boring, right? With just video, video, video. Um, so we partnered with iHeart uh, Rock 100, and what we're going to be doing is we're taping the awards in November, and we're going to air it live December 3rd on Zoom, but it's going to be, we're going to have a trivia contest, and we have prizes to give away, and then we're going to do an award, you know, oh. so we're, going to, we're going to bring in the video. And then we're gonna do a best dress in your rock outfit. And the winner is gonna win a sign, an autographed electric guitar from Trans-Siberian Orchestra. Wow. And then, the, and then we're gonna do another award. And then a grand prize winner is gonna win two round trip um, air tickets next year in, in the 48 uh, states. Oh my gosh, that sounds, that you know, sounds you know, it's gonna And it's only $20 a ticket. And, and that will register you to win all these prizes and to be participate, you dress up, you know, answer the trivia. So it's going to be fun. It's not going to be boring at all. I'm really excited about it. Um, I, you know, we were talking about, you know, how to zoom. I got to just figure out how to bring the, the, the video into the, to the zoom, but I'll have that figured out by the time we do it. <laughs> that sounds like so much fun. I'm writing notes to myself. I'm sure you'll see some of our students at that one too. Yeah, great. <laughs> yeah, that sounds great. And it looks like, so Jason had a question. Um, so Jason is a computer science student and he wanted to know what the chamber might offer for someone who's in a, in a tech startup. Which I think hmm. is a great question. Yeah, that is a great question. Um, a tech startup. Hmm. I'd have to uh, ask my partner, Cindy, at uh, Rockville Economic Development, if we could come up with some targeted companies that, you know, that would help you, that could mentor you. Um, right off the bat, I just can't think of anyone right off. I, we don't have like a, a tech mastermind. I'm trying to start a biohealth mastermind now mm. for, for those people, but um that's a great, great question. So something like that, I'd have to take it one-on-one -on -one and use the resources I have and see you know, who we could come up with for you and then kind of make that connection. Mm, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. So, um, uh, and how much do, like, uh, you have these mastermind groups which sound really, really interesting. Are those um, sort of, do they come organically out of the membership? Do, if yeah. someone has an idea to start one, then they would yeah. be able to do that? Yeah. Yeah. So Jason, once you get uh, you get your your membership to the chamber, you uh, you you should go for it. <laughs> Do that, okay. And then Kayla wanted to know if there are any um, mentoring programs, any type of mentoring programs for young entrepreneurs through the chamber. Well, that's where the young professionals program is going to kick in, right? 
And like I said, we're, we're revamping that now as we speak. So it's a good opportunity to, to get involved. And, you know, I like that idea and I'm going to, of having a, um, a different membership for students. So I'm going to look into that and see what we can do and, That's and great. Get, you, get you, uh, connected because, you know, you're the generation that's going to take over next. And, you know, we want to hear from you. We want to hear your ideas and what's important to you. And because it's up to you to make it, we're here to support you, but you know, it's up to you what you want it to be. You know, I'm very open to creating anything that, that can help move you forward. That would be great. And of course, what you're doing is building your, your future membership by doing that because, um, I know for myself, I did not know what a chamber of commerce was when I was in college. I just figured it was kind of like the Lions Club or something. I had no idea. So um, introducing the idea and the value of a chamber, I think is great, would be a great, um, you know, win-win, right? You, that, yeah. that, would be, that would be terrific, mm -hmm. super. Um, okay, so uh, any other questions from our audience? I'm looking back at my notes to see which ones I did not write down, but you all may have done the same. How much does it cost? Yep. And a young professional generally, what age are you talking about when you, for that, that under group? Are they, 40. Like under, under 40? 40? Mm -hmm. Okay. So over 25? <laughs> I mean, oh. is, is the bottom, the bottom inch? I mean, if there's an 18 year old, I mean, if, if I had an opportunity when I was 18, to be able to jump into a young professional program? I mean, I would have. Yeah, yeah, good, good. Okay, also, I actually have one other. I wonder if you can talk a little bit more about your lunch and learn events, which I assume don't have lunch attached to them now, but they're no. continuing. Um, yes, what we hooked up with um, Business Connect, it's a Montgomery County program, because they were looking for speakers and topics. And I'm like, why reinvent the wheel when we're already doing it? Why don't we um, call it a business connect and we'll just do what we do and provide the content. And so it was a great partnership. We did maybe five or six uh, lunch and learns with them, which we were gonna be doing anyway, but it was just great to, um, to have them as our partner. And um, well, what was, oh, so the other luncheons, our last lunch was, I think, March 18th at, at um, Trapezaria. And what <laughs> happens is the lunch, people pay, you know, for their lunch. And then we sit down and I usually invite a nonprofit to come and speak with us, mm -hmm. you know, so people can learn what, what the nonprofit does. Mm -hmm. And then um, we go around, you know, and everybody at their table introduces themselves. They hand out business cards and it's just an informal way. Some people can make morning meetings. Some people can make lunch meetings. Some people can make after work meetings. Mm -hmm. So we offer all different things, you know, so to fit people's schedules and what's important to them, mm -hmm. you know, and the, the, you know, maybe the mix and mingles could get 50 to 60 people, 70, 80 people. Um, but the luncheons would usually get 20 to 25 people. So it's much, you know, it, it, it's much easier to talk to people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, in the little groups. So in, in the Lunch and Learns, is it a, it's, it's a big conversation then? Everyone is in the same conversation? But no, it's, you're in a conversation with your own table. Gotcha. Okay. Okay. That's great. And uh, Kim Kelly would very much like it if you could speak about the dog walker who pivoted to a new business model oh, yeah, 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 due yeah. to COVID. <laughs> I was like the dog walker. Okay. <laughs> yes. All right. Here we go. Uh, one of our biggest success stories that I thought, um, she, this woman had her business and it was called the Right Fluff Pet Sitting. And I actually hired her uh, when I went on vacation to stay with my, stay at my house and watch my dog. And she was great. She would take little videos and send them to me, you know, so I always saw my dog. Well, then all of a sudden COVID hit and guess what? Everybody's staying home. Nobody needs her service. Mm -hmm. So what is she going to do? So she got really smart and she said, you know what? If I can go grocery shopping for people, that's 10 less people that are going to go in the grocery store, huh. you know? 
So she put together a list. Like today I'm going to go to Giant. Tomorrow I'm going to go to Trader Joe's. The next day I'm going to go here. And she had quite a business going. And a matter of fact, I think she's still doing it. She's back to her pet sitting, but she's still doing it on the side because it was so successful. Wow. Wow. That's a, that was, you know, a lot of people have, have really pivoted like um, twin Valley distillers. Mm -hmm. Okay. They stopped making what they were making and turned all their equipment into making hand sanitizers mm -hmm. and was selling it right out of Goody drive. I mean, that was, that was a great pivot. Um, a lot of people did, did a lot of uh, creative thinking. And that's what I said before. If you have an entrepreneur mind, you just have to look what's around you. You have to see what the need is and you have to try to fulfill that need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's super great. Okay. Um, any other questions from our students? or other uh, uh, guests tonight. Kim wants you to know that the dog um, walker is, dog sitter, uh, grocery store person is also in the young professionals group so that you can get to meet people like that. I know that one of the things that, um, um, my students know this because we've talked about it in class, but if there are others with us who, who aren't aware of this, is that each chamber also has a directory. And if you are looking to find someone, you don't have to be a member in order to connect with members of the Chamber of Commerce. So that um, in that way, it can be a resource for, for, for everybody, I think. And so, well, let me, you just yeah. brought up a great point, Rebecca. Okay. Um, you don't know how many calls the chambers receive to ask if, if such and such is a business member, because people do business with people that are chamber members. Mm -hmm. You know that they pay their taxes, they have a tax ID number, they're credible, you know, they can get um, recommendations, they can get referrals. Um, that way they know they're not working with, you know, someone working out of the back of their truck. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so we, we get a lot of calls asking, you know, is, is such and such a company a member of the chamber? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yes, I can see so, that. And you mentioned, um, you mentioned about having a tax ID. Are there, requ are there requirements? Like what are the requirements to be a chamber member? Yes, you have to be a business registered with the state and you'll have a tax ID number. And once you're that, then you can join a chamber. Mm, okay, okay, good. If it's and, a uh, in good standing with the state first. Gotcha. Okay, good. And, and uh, Kim wants to know what uh, this whole ordeal with COVID has taught you about resiliency. Oh, I've been this, I've been around this road before in, in, uh, <laughs> you know, I, I've done it in my, my two businesses before I've had to be resilient. And also um, I was in Vermont when storm Irene hit and it, devastated the area. I never thought I'd see anything like that in my life where the roads were just cut off and there were helicopters dropping food and supplies. And the first thing I did is I called FEMA and I had them open an office next to my office. And I called every single member that I had. And I said, what do you need? I want you to come and we're going to help you. And I have someone from FEMA that's going to help you. And a lot of people said to me, oh, you know, even though they lost everything, they were like, you know what, there's someone worse than me. Don't worry about me. And at that point, I had so much water and I had so much supplies being dropped, yeah. you know, and like the grocery store was underwater. It was, it was unbelievable. But, you know, I had to learn to pivot. And all I can say is, thank God the kids weren't in school because there was, they would have been on a moat and no one would have been able to get to them. Mm. It was, it was that bad, wow. but you know, just again, being a chamber of commerce, having the access to the resources to help the business and the community. So when all this happened in COVID, all that kicked in for me, you know, I felt the pain of the businesses, you know, not knowing where they're going to get their money from. You know, it, it took the storm Irene and it took that 
experience of mine back in 2008 to really kick into gear and, and do as much as I could, as fast as I could to help these businesses. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, huh, that's so interesting. So I know that one of the things that businesses are, are really interested in is like, how do they get some of these PPP loans and, you know, take, take advantage of some of the, the support and help that's coming from, um, from the state and the, the federal well, government. Well, yesterday, part of yesterday, I just put an email blast out that there's still money in the reopen Montgomery grant. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, so um, you know, we're always providing information to our members and you could go on probably any chamber website right now. And we all have COVID resources and everything is listed there. One more yeah. thing I want to say, I have a saying that I, that I taught my son. The way you do anything is the way you do everything. So if you're going to cut corners on anything, that's how you're going to live your life. You know, so don't go there, you know, do the best you can all the time on a daily basis because it will make you feel so good. And all these little things that you do on a daily basis, it all adds up, you know, and that's why with all the different TV stations I ever worked for, any place I ever worked, I never burnt a bridge. You know, you always want to give your best. You always want to be your best. And, you know, you have a choice, either cut the corners or you don't. That's, that's your choice. That's fantastic. I think we should end there because I want that to resonate with everybody who's with us tonight and everybody who's able to watch us in in our recording. Um, Thank you again, Margie, for joining us tonight. And, uh, Be well, everyone.